Well, good morning, uh, everybody, and a very warm uh, welcome to All Souls uh, Langham Place and to this memorial and thanksgiving service uh, for the life of Colin Hart. Particular welcome to Colin's family, to Rita, Colin's mother, Terry, his brother, the wider family. Thank you for being with us. You're warmly welcome, and thank you uh, for coming and sharing uh, this occasion. A sentence of scripture from Revelation chapter 5, verse 13. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honour and glory and might for ever and ever. Lord, we pray that our service of thanksgiving this morning may honour you the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and let's raise the rafters. We've crowned him with many crowns. Colin's home call, my immediate thought were the words of King David in uh, 2 Samuel. Uh, speaking of the death of Abner, David says, a prince and a great man has fallen today. And I felt that about Colin. He was a prince and a great man. He fell that day. But I do sincerely rejoice and celebrate the fact that a prince and a great man is alive in glory today. On the front of your order of service, you'll see it says Colin Hart, 1963-2024. Well, for all of us, the timing of our birth and our death are out of our hands. As the psalmist says, all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. But what we do with that dash is in our hands. And my word, Colin certainly made the most of his dash. Motivated by his love for the Lord Jesus Christ and gratitude for his sacrifice at Calvary, he leaves a legacy of a nation and of individuals, those here today, and thousands more besides that have been shaped for the better. I feel confident that when he came face to face with his saviour, he heard the words that we should all long to hear. Well done, good and faithful servant. Come and share your master's happiness. One of my abiding memories of Colin was his humility. He never pushed himself forward and yet he had at his heart, a passion for what he described and others in the Christian Institute describe as the ordinary work of churches. And I think that's a powerful statement. We're not seeking glorification of this work or that. We are praying for, seeking to encourage, seeking to protect, seeking to enable the ordinary work of the church of God in prayer, in teaching, in love, in fellowship. Isaiah chapter 32, verse 8. But the noble man 
makes noble plans and by noble deeds he stands. Shortly after I was aware that I was going to speak on this occasion, my eye fell on that verse. And as I read it, I thought what a fitting epitaph it was for Colin Hart. We gather to remember, in the terms of this verse, a noble man. This is not a nobility of birth or social status or title, but of spiritual character and life, the sort of nobility that God can give us. It was never about Colin, and that's what's so important this, today. It was never about him. He inspired and trained up others who served eagerly alongside him. He left an organization well able to stand on its own feet, to run with the baton into the future in the cause of our righteous king and for the good of our people. And my goodness, there is so much more to do. And because of Colin's faith in Jesus Christ, not only can we look back with gratitude and say, thank you, Lord, for Colin Hart, but we can look on with confidence in the glorious fact that Colin today is with Christ, which is better by far, and he sees the king face to face, the king that all humanity one day will face, the king of righteousness. Amen. Just a quick word that shows just how important prayer was to Colin. Uh, I first met Colin 25 years ago. I worked with Colin for 14 years, and I remember him telling me the story of how when he was a student in his early 20s in Newcastle, sometimes when he couldn't sleep, he'd cycle around the streets, and he'd pray. And he'd pray for the welfare of the city, and he'd pray that God would show him what he must do with his life. And I think God answered those prayers. Please bless the staff and the trustees of the Christian Institute. Give us all wisdom and grace and discernment for the days and the years that lay ahead. And may all true Christians throughout our land proclaim your truth with boldness and with love. May we be a people of prayer, humbly getting on our knees and relying on you. And may we never be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power of work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.